Hello and welcome to Fast Talk About Metrology, the show where ultra high accuracy measurement meets motorsports. I'm your host, Bridget Benedetti, and with me today is Doug Ducart, Executive Vice President and General Manager of Hendrick Motorsports. Thanks for joining us, Doug. It's a pleasure, Bridget. So tell me a little bit of background about Hendrick Motorsports. Well, we're a company that races in the Sprint Cup Series uh, in NASCAR with four teams. And uh, I think we have a little video here that we can show you to give you a little background of, of where we're located and how the company uh, works. That would be great. Our people are our biggest asset. And I believe this year will be one of the best years that we've ever had. Because I think we're poised to do it together. We're stronger together. We're stronger together. championship year for us. Ready to go back to the front stage, ready to put some more H's on the wall. But let's get it done. So your title is EVP and General Manager, but what's your role? What do you do? So in the company, uh, I am dedicated to, my group is dedicated to making, constructing, developing, and racing the cars at the track. So that is a group of 440 people in my group of the 600 at Hendrick Motorsports. That group is made up of 70 degree engineers. There's 70 pit performers and everything in between, truck drivers, everything to get the cars to the track. So anything that has to do with campaigning the cars on the racetrack is, is what I'm responsible for. Wow, that's a lot. That's a yeah. lot. And how many race cars do you have on the campus? Well, we have four teams and we race uh, 36 races a year all over the country at different types of racetracks. So each team has 14 race cars. So there's 56 race cars on campus in some uh, level of build and construction or at the racetrack itself. So um, there's cars all over the country and in the shop at one time. So there's a lot of construction going on. I guess so. That's why yeah. you need all those engineers, right? That's right. right. <laughs> now NASCAR, um, they must be some kind of governing, governing body of the sport also. So do they put constraints on the car construction? Yeah, so there's rules around everything that we do. And NASCAR is the sanctioning body, so they run the races and they inspect the cars. Um, they inspect the cars initially when we get to the track. They inspect them every time we go on the track for a qualifying or race event. And then if you're fortunate enough to win or finish second, they take the car back and inspect the car at their tech center. So um, their tolerance around the external part of the car is 100 thousandths of an inch. And that's a 16 foot car hand-built prototype. So right. So we're dealing in very small tolerances, and we take that hundred thousandths of an inch and work in there to try to maximize our aerodynamics at all times. So I can see you definitely need technology from hexagon manufacturing we need intelligence. Precision, <laughs> we need precision measurement at all times. Can yes. you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, I think the thing that's important to understand is that you know, we race from the middle of February to the weekend before the American Thanksgiving. 
So we only have three weeks off in that whole time frame. So we are constantly learning and iterating. And we're taking learnings from the track, we take learnings from the wind tunnel, we take uh, learnings from our computational fluid dynamics, which is a way to run the car virtually in the computer like, like it's a wind tunnel. We take all of that and we decide what we want to do when we build the race cars. Or we could have a car done and make changes to the car when it's, after it's almost ready to go to the track. When wow. we've taken cars that are painted and rework them before we put them on the truck. So we are constantly learning and developing and we need the hexagon tools to allow us to quickly adapt and make precision changes to the cars before we take them to the racetrack. Okay, so you have to be fast and accurate. Always. Uh, not just yes. on the track, but all the way there. That's right. And so every bit of your process has to be fast and accurate. That's right. Great, so you get speed and confidence from Hexagon. Is that right? Well, I think, <laughs> the th well, the key is, you know, speed is part of what we do. Yes. And so there's speed on the racetrack, and that's how we get measured. But there's speed in, in how quickly we try to learn and implement changes. And so the, the key to the hexagon, techno hexagon manufacturing intelligence technology is we use the roamers a lot for, for point measurement. Now we're using a lot of the scanning capability from the roamers for um, panel placement, like putting a whole panel on a oh, car sure. and then aligning it just the, the way we want it. And we feel like that's helping us get more accurate and repeatable builds. Great, so all in the end, all the cars go faster. That's right. All right, fantastic. And did you tell me earlier you also build race engines, is that right? That's right, so we build engines uh, for our four teams, but we also build them for competitor teams. So we have um, 12 engine sets of engines that we build every weekend. So of the 43 cars on the track, 12 of them use our our race engines and so we build 700 race engines a year Wow! and those parts are we make a lot of those parts we buy a lot of those parts and uh, we use the Brown and Sharp uh, global CMM to measure a lot of our I mean almost everything that we build before we put it in the engines and it's very important obviously the quality control is very high in that situation um, because uh, a failure can be can really mean a season you know, if you break an engine oh, sure. at the wrong time, it, it, can, it can be, you know, have a huge impact on your racing season. So there's a lot of quality control that goes into all the components that go into those race engines. Great. So you're using the stationary CMMs, and do you use any other technology in the engine, or is it just the stationary CMMs? So then CMM? we also do um, some reverse engineering with scanning capability when we look at um, the flow of the, of the cylinder head and the flow of the intake manifold. We can reverse engineer different shapes that we come up with and then duplicate those in other engines. Nice. Now, uh, what new applications are you going to come up with for your using hexagon technology? I think that, that you know, the thing that, that we've seen as we've grown our relationship with hexagon is that the equipment is obviously very good and, and easy to use. And we have, we have 15 Romer arms on campus that we're Fantastic. using in, in various states of car construction. We have one in the engine shop. Um, we have five scanning heads that are in use. So th they're, they are prevalent everywhere in our facility. And if anyone that's ever come to our facility, this, you'll see roamers <laughs> scattered through every building. Glad to hear that. Um, but I think what we see is some different ways that we can um, process the car. And we, we see as the, the Leica tracker system. We also see potentially the white light scanning capability as something that we'll look at in the future as we look at the way we process cars and some of the um, speed that that can bring and accuracy. Uh, we'll take a look at that in the future. Oh yeah, you bet. Well, thanks for joining us. Is there anything else you wanted to add before we close? I think the, you know, I think the, the key thing is that everything that we do the data is very vital and key. And so through every part of the process, we take that data and we implement that into our own simulation. So we have a simulation program that can run the car virtually in the computer because we have limited track time. And so when we measure a chassis, we put that into our simulation. When we measure a component, we put that into our simulation. When we assemble the race car, we take key measurements off that assembly and we put that in our simulation. And the important, in any, in any simulation, whether it's in racing or, or any other industry, it's only as good as the information you put in it. And so what's important is that the accuracy that the roamers give us 
allow us to have better simulation and allow us to execute through the race weekend better. And I think that as we've tied all of these processes together, the chassis construction, the body construction, the assembly of the car, we measure components in, as they are worn or as they race. So in other words, if we have a rear housing that's run a race and it hasn't wrecked, uh -huh. we can use it again. And But before we use it, we'll measure it again to make sure it hasn't distorted oh, or, right. or moved. Right. And, and we constantly watch for that, you know, and then if it, if it gets to where it's uh, too bad, then we'll just build a new one. But, but also we take that new information and we build, we put all that together to run our simulation. And so when we go to the racetrack on a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we get no data off the race car by, by NASCAR's rules. Oh. So we rely on that simulation all weekend to help us tune the race car. The driver feedback and the simulation is what we do to tune the race car on the weekend. And so all that accuracy that we had measuring all parts of the race car before we got to the racetrack are key for us to be successful on the race weekend. That is fascinating. So much more going on than the rest of us know about. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Bridget. We want to thank Doug Ducar for joining us here. And to learn more, go to HendrickMotorsports.com. For more on HXGN TV or to watch additional episodes, please tune in to HXGNTV.com. I'm Bridget Benedetti. Thank you for watching. Thank you.